Jeremiah chapter 39 In the ninth year of Zedekiah king of Judah, in the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon marched against Jerusalem with his whole army and laid siege to it. And on the ninth day of the fourth month of Zedekiah's eleventh year, the city wall was broken through. Then all the officials of the king of Babylon came and took seats in the middle gate. Nergal Shariza of Sagma, Nebo Sasikim, a chief officer, Nergal Shariza, a high official, and all the other officials of the king of Babylon. When Zedekiah king of Judah and all the soldiers saw them, they fled. They left the city at night by way of the king's garden, through the gate between the two walls, and headed towards the Arabah. But the Babylonian army pursued them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. They captured him and took him to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon at Riblah, in the land of Hamath, where he pronounced sentence on him. There, at Riblah, the king of Babylon slaughtered the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and also killed all the nobles of Judah. Then he put out Zedekiah's eyes, and bound him with bronze shackles to take him to Babylon. The Babylonians set fire to the royal palace and the houses of the people, and broke down the walls of Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard, carried into exile to Babylon the people who remained in the city, along with those who had gone over to him and the rest of the people. But Nebuzaradan, the commander of the guard, left behind in the land of Judah some of the poor people who owned nothing. And at that time he gave them vineyards and fields. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had given these orders about Jeremiah through Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard. Take him and look after him. Don't harm him, but do for him whatever he asks. So Nebuzaradan, the commander of the guard, Nebuchadnezzar, a chief officer, Nergal Shariza, a high official, and all the other officers of the king of Babylon, sent and had Jeremiah taken out of the courtyard of the guard. They handed him over to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, to take him back to his home. So he remained among his own people. While Jeremiah had been confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him, Go and tell Ebed-Melech the Cushite, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I am about to fulfill my words against this city, words concerning disaster, not prosperity. At that time they will be fulfilled before your eyes. But I will rescue you on that day, declares the Lord. You will not be given into the hands of those you fear. I will save you. You will not fall by the sword, but will escape with your life because you trust in me, declares the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 40 The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord after Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard, had released him at Ramah. He had found Jeremiah bound in chains among all the captives from Jerusalem and Judah who were being carried into exile to Babylon. When the commander of the guard found Jeremiah, he said to him, the Lord your God decreed this disaster for this place, and now the Lord has brought it about. He has done just as he said he would. All this happened because you people sinned against the Lord and did not obey him. But today I am freeing you from the chains on your wrists. Come with me to Babylon if you like, and I will look after you. But if you do not want to, then don't come. Look, the whole country lies before you. Go wherever you please. However, before Jeremiah turned to go, Nebuzaradan added, Go back to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, whom the king of Babylon has appointed over the towns of Judah, and live with him among the people, or go anywhere else you please. Then the commander gave him provisions and a present, and let him go. So Jeremiah went to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, at Mizpah, and stayed with him among the people who were left behind in the land. When all the army officers and their men who were still in the open country heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah son of Ahikam as governor over the land, 
and had put him in charge of the men, women, and children who were the poorest in the land and who had not been carried into exile to Babylon. They came to Gedaliah at Mizpah, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, Jehanan and Jonathan, the sons of Korea, Siriah, son of Tanumeth, the sons of Ephi, the Natophathite, and Jeazaniah, the son of the Maacathite, and their men. Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, took an oath to reassure them and their men. Do not be afraid to serve the Babylonians, he said. Settle down in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it will go well with you. I myself will stay at Mizpah to represent you before the Babylonians who come to us. But you are to harvest the wine, summer fruit, and olive oil, and put them in your stories jars, and live in the towns you have taken over. When all the Jews in Moab, Ammon, Edom, and all the other countries heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant in Judah, and had appointed Gedaliah son of Ahikam the son of Shaphan as governor over them, they all came back to the land of Judah to Gedaliah at Mizpah, from all the countries where they had been scattered, and they harvested an abundance of wine and summer fruit. Johanan, son of Korea, and all the army officers still in the open country, came to Gedaliah at Mizpah and said to him, Don't you know that Baalis, king of the Ammonites, has sent Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, to take your life? But Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, did not believe them. Then Johanan, son of Korea, said privately to Gedaliah at Mizpah, Let me go and kill Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, and no one will know it. Why should he take your life and cause all the Jews who are gathered around you to be scattered and the remnant of Judah to perish? But Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, said to Johanan, son of Korea, Don't do such a thing. What you are saying about Ishmael is not true. Jeremiah chapter 41 In the seventh month, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishema, who was of royal blood and had been one of the king's officers, came with ten men to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, at Mizpah. While they were eating together there, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, and the ten men who were with him got up and struck down Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, with the sword, killing the one whom the king of Babylon had appointed as governor over the land. Ishmael, also killed all the men of Judah who were with Gedaliah at Mizpah, as well as the Babylonian soldiers who were there. The day after Gedaliah's assassination, before anyone knew about it, eighty men who had shaved off their beards, torn their clothes and cut themselves, came from Shechem, Shiloh and Samaria, bringing grain offerings and incense with them to the house of the Lord. Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, went out from Mizpah to meet them, weeping as he went. When he met them, he said, Come to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam. When they went into the city, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, and the men who were with him, slaughtered them and threw them into a cistern. But ten of them said to Ishmael, Don't kill us. We have wheat and barley, olive oil and honey hidden in a field. So he let them alone and did not kill them with the others. Now the cistern where he threw all the bodies of the men he had killed along with Gedaliah was the one King Asa had made as part of his defense against Baasha, king of Israel. Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, filled it with the dead. Ishmael made captives of all the rest of the people who were in Mizpah, the king's daughters along with all the others who were left there, over whom Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard, had appointed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam. Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, took them captive and set out to cross over to the Ammonites. When Johanan, son of Korea, and all the army officers who were with him heard about all the crimes Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, had committed, they took all their men and went to fight Ishmael, son of Nethaniah. They caught up with him near the great pool in Gibeon. When all the people Ishmael had with him saw Jehanan, son of Korea, and the army officers who were with him, they were glad. All the people Ishmael had taken captive at Mizpah turned and went over to Jehanan, son of Korea. But Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, and eight of his men escaped from Jehanan and fled to the Ammonites. Then Jehanan, son of Korea, 
and all the army officers who were with him, led away all the people of Mizpah who had survived, whom Johanan had recovered from Ishmael son of Nethaniah, after Ishmael had assassinated Gedaliah son of Ahikam. The soldiers, women, children, and court officials he had recovered from Gibeon. And they went on, stopping at Jeruth Kimam near Bethlehem, on their way to Egypt to escape the Babylonians. They were afraid of them because Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, had killed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon had appointed as governor over the land. James chapter 3 Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings, who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Psalm 100 Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures for ever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Proverbs chapter 18 An unfriendly person pursues selfish ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. Fools find no pleasure in understanding but delight in airing their own opinions. When wickedness comes, so does contempt and with shame comes reproach. The words of the mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. It is not good to be partial to the wicked, and so deprive the innocent of justice. The lips of fools bring them strife, 
and their mouths invite a beating. The mouths of fools are their undoing, and their lips are a snare to their very lives. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. One who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it a wall too high to scale. Before a downfall, the heart is haughty, but humility comes before honour. To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. The human spirit can endure in times of illness, but a crushed spirit, who can bear? The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge, for the ears of the wise seek it out. A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. In a lawsuit, the first to speak seems right, until someone comes forward and cross-examines. Casting the lot settles disputes and keeps strong opponents apart. A brother wronged is more unyielding than a fortified city. Disputes are like the barred gates of a citadel. From the fruit of their mouth a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favour from the Lord. The poor plead for mercy, but the rich answer harshly. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother.